Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Triana Ann and today I'm going to be sharing with you all the books that I managed to read in April 2020. Now I have a massive stack of books <laughs> and I mean massive. If you've seen the thumbnail you know it's massive. So if you didn't know April was the month for the Owl's Magical Readathon hosted by G over at Book Roast. I will leave all the links to that down below. But essentially, you need to complete certain exams at Hogwarts so that you can progress to your chosen wizarding career. I chose an aura, which meant I had to read five books. However, I actually read 15 books this month, which is absolutely crazy to me. <laughs> right, I don't want this video to be any longer than it has to be because it's it's gonna be long. So Let's just get into it. So the first book I read this month was All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. This was for the Defence Against the Dark Arts exam and it's about a princess that has this power that only the royal family has and one night when she is finally able to prove to the people of the society as well as her parents that she is ready to come into power and be named as heir to the throne, something goes horribly wrong and the princess is forced to flee. Throughout this book we meet pirates, mermaids, we have a stowaway on the ship and we delve into a lot of the magic within this world. I enjoyed this book to an extent but ultimately I gave it three stars. It wasn't anything absolutely amazing and I was kind of bored <laughs> up until the halfway point which is not great. I just, I don't know what it was. It had all the elements for me to love with it being set on the sea, it had mermaids, magic, pirates, all the good things but it just fell flat for me and I ended up giving this a three star. Next up I read Serpent and Dove and this was for the History of Magic exam. I absolutely love this book. This is about a witch called Lou and a witch hunter called Reed and <laughs> they somehow end up forced into marriage. However, Reed does not know that Lou is a witch. So this story delves into their relationships, certain aspects within the world, the politics within the world, as well as the different communities, is that the right word? Basically, we have the Chasseurs, which Reed is a part of, and they are set on killing all of the witches, no matter if they're good or bad. If they see a witch, they will kill them. So it's all about both of these characters finding balance within that world. And yeah, I absolutely loved it. I think this is one of the biggest books on my TBR and I flew through it in two days. <laughs> I could not put it down. It's such a fast read. And if you can't tell, I gave this one five stars. Next up, I read Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. This was for the Herbology exam, I believe. And I actually have a 24 hour reading vlog where I read the whole book in that day. So I will leave that down below if you want to check it out. I had a really good time reading this book. If you don't know, it's about Hercule Poirot, who is a renowned detective, and he ends up on the Orient Express train. However, a snowstorm and a murder causes the train to stop and none of the passengers leave until Poirot has solved the case. This is a really short book. This is like 240 pages and the mystery was so compelling. I did not have a clue who was behind everything. It's just crazy to me how Agatha Christie manages to write such a compelling, complex mystery novel in 240 pages and everything tying together in the end to make sense. It's crazy to me. I really enjoyed going through this story and trying to solve the mystery alongside Poro, which was fun. However, I did ultimately give this four stars, which isn't a bad rating, but I think because I read it in such a short period of time and I was just trying to finish it within 24 hours, I missed a lot of key things that if I were to reread, I think I'd pick up on a bit more. After that, I read Winterwood for Charms. This is another book that kind of fell flat for me, which I'm so annoyed about. I went into this book with such high expectations. Everyone that I'd seen talk about it absolutely loved it. This story is about Nora Walker, who is from a family of witches. The Walker family has lived in the same village since the creation of this village and this village is actually surrounded by a forest called the Wicker Woods. The only people who can enter the forest are the Walker family and it's very specific, they can only do so on a full moon and they have to state their name and then proceed to walk into the forest. They can only take lost things as well 
so lost things from the village will appear in the wicker woods and this family can take stuff and take it back to their houses. However, one night Nora finds something a bit different. She finds a boy that is presumed to be dead and the rest of the story is unravelling this whole mystery. It is very, very atmospheric. I loved the setting and the atmosphere of this book. However, I was reading it as it was extremely sunny outside, which put me out of it a little bit, which hindered my experience. Also, I kind of guessed the whole plot twist about 40 pages in. <laughs> I don't know if it's because I've just read Murder on the Orient Express and my detective skills were on high alert. I'm not sure, but yeah, I predicted it straight away. So then it took me 200 odd pages to get to the point where this reveal is revealed and it was not satisfactory really to me. Which is a shame because I did predict that I would love this book. Next up I had a bit of a mini breakdown <laughs> and I completely went off my TBR. I actually read Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I've had this book since it came out. I've met Jay Kristoff. I've got the book signed by both him and Amy. Now I felt like with the second book Aurora Burning coming out on May the 5th I believe it was time to read this. So I actually listened to this on audio. I had a few audible credits that I needed to use so I decided to purchase this mainly because I feel like I get through sci-fi a lot faster and enjoy them a lot better through audio. It's the same with his Lifelike series. I've read both of the books that are out currently through audio and I absolutely loved them. And that was the same for Aurora Rising, which I'm so glad to say because I wasn't sure if I was going to enjoy this. So this actually follows a very large cast of characters. I can't remember the squad number, but the basic premise is that Tyler Jones, who is Aurora Academy's finest recruit, is finally going to have the opportunity to choose his own crew and go on some set missions. However, the night before he's allowed to choose his crew, he actually gets an alert that there is a life form alive on a planet that's meant to be completely dead. Tyler arrives on this planet and saves a girl called Aurora and takes her back to the academy, but having doing so, he has basically forfeited his right to choose his new squad because he missed the whole ceremony. So he is left with the bottom of the barrel, everyone that basically wasn't chosen by everyone else, and they embark on a mission to save Aurora and on the way they discover some secrets and, you know, hidden information about this government. Like I said, I really enjoyed this, I flew through it, I was actually listening to this whilst I was colouring in my colouring book, so I got a load of pages of that done whilst also consuming this story and I'm really glad that I did it that way. I gave it four stars which is really good for a sci-fi. I don't generally tend to pick them up and enjoy them so yeah a good sci-fi story from this amazing author duo. Going back to my set TBR now I read The Storm Crow for Care of Magical Creatures. This is actually a book that surprised me. I thought I was gonna enjoy this book but oh my goodness I loved it. <laughs> This is another one where I kind of flew through and I just devoured the whole thing. So this is about Kaliza and at the start of this story, her country, which is Rodare, is actually attacked by outer forces. They've been betrayed and the magical crows that helps this city survive and thrive are actually all killed. However, one day Kaliza goes back to one of the rookeries that was destroyed and she actually finds one last crow egg which turns out to be that of a storm crow. Throughout this book we follow her journey in trying to overcome a lot of different obstacles that are thrown her way. Yeah, I really really enjoyed this book. However, <laughs> like with Winterwood, I did kind of guess what they needed to do from the offset. It was fairly obvious I think but this book was interesting enough to keep me guessing with some other things so it wasn't solely this one massive reveal which I guessed. <laughs> Don't know if that made any sense at all but I ended up giving this five stars. I really enjoyed it and also actually it really did remind me of Eragon by Christopher Paolini. I think I said that in one of my reading vlogs. There's just a lot of parallels that I noticed whilst reading this and I kind of loved it even more. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to hear my thoughts, please check out my reading vlog. For this next exam, I actually changed the book 
that I read. I believe in my original Owls Readathon TBR video, I said I was going to read The One Memory of Flora Banks. However, I got 40 pages in and I wasn't feeling it. I kind of knew it wouldn't be for me, but I just wanted to get it off my shelf. So I DNF'd it. I am kind of glad though, because I feel like it would have put me in a slump had I carried on. And it also gave me the chance to read a book that I really, really loved. And that one is the Promised Neverland, story by Kayu Shirai, and the art is by Pasuka Demizu. This was for Arithmancy, which is a book out of your comfort zone, I believe, and believe it or not, this is my first ever manga. I am so, so glad I started with this one. For some reason, I thought it was gonna be a really nice Peter Pan retelling, because obviously, Neverland, we've got the nice blue skies. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> this is a horror manga and it's actually pretty disturbing. So this follows a group of kids at an orphanage, three in particular who are Emma, Norman, and Ray. They are the brightest kids at the orphanage. I think they're also the eldest, and they score 100% on their tests every time. However, none of these three children have ever been adopted. Obviously, they're still in the orphanage, and they're not sure why until one day they discover that the orphanage is more of a farm and that these demonic creatures ultimately are going to pay a lot more for the highly skilled children than they are for the younger ones with less intelligence. I read this in one sitting, it's not very long at all but oh my goodness it was crazy. <laughs> However, I feel like this is such a good manga to actually start off with because I got into the format really quickly and then after a few pages, I wasn't even paying attention to the structure and the format. I was just literally reading the story and following along. I loved this. I did rate it four stars because I'm not sure how I want to rate mangas yet. Obviously, I need to read a lot more to find which ones are the better ones. This is just my first one, like I said, but from that, I did give it a four stars. I absolutely loved it and I really want to continue on with the series. Then for potions, I read Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, or rather, I listened to the audiobook. This is a very short book. It's 110 pages in this edition, and I flew through it. I think I did a jigsaw and I put the audiobook on in the background and I think it was three hours but I listened at two times the speed so I got it done in an hour and a half. I did end up giving this one a four stars even though I did really enjoy it. I feel like I would appreciate it more if I read it physically. So next time I feel the urge to read this I'm going to pick it up physically. If you don't know what this story is about, where have you been? <laughs> This is, I think, one of the more well-known classics, especially with the Disney adaptations. But it is about a young girl called Alice who finds herself in a very strange place called Wonderland where nothing makes sense and everything seems to be working against each other. <laughs> so we follow Alice's journey dealing with all these different things and seeing it ultimately change the way she sees things. Next up is the exam for divination and for this one I was actually very surprised. The book that was selected for me by the random number generator was The Changeling's Journey by Christine Spores. The reason I was surprised is because I absolutely love this book. This follows a girl called Morven and she is the last changeling in her village. She is desperate to find out why fairies steal human babies and leave changelings in their place and so she embarks on a journey with her best friend to go to the fairy realm to get some answers. We follow three different perspectives in this which is Morven, Princess Freya and Queen Una and all of their stories intertwine and it's done in such a clever way that I really really like this. It does also have an FF romance which was nice to see and a lot of characters in this book are openly gay as well. I think I gave this four stars to start off with but I might bump it up to five because I really really enjoyed this book. I had such a good time reading it even though it's quite a big book. Again I just flew through it and I absolutely loved the story, I loved the setting, it's so magical and quite funny at times as well, seeing Morven and her friend trying to navigate through the fairy lands, which obviously is going to be quite treacherous because fairies are known to be tricksters, but it also had some very dark moments sprinkled in there as well, so you have a really good balance of emotions that, yeah, were very, very prominent throughout this whole book. Then for Transfiguration, I read A Wizard of Earthsea. Do not freak out about this book. I did not read the whole thing this month. <laughs> I actually read up to where the ribbon is, so not even the post-it notes. 
It was about 130 pages, I think, of this book. This is a bind up of, I think, six novels in the Earthsea series by Ursula K. Le Guin. And I read A Wizard of Earthsea for the Le Guin Along, which was hosted by Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction. I will leave all the links you need for that down below as well. Now, in this story, we follow a young wizard called Ged. And one day he manages to protect his village from an invading force and because of that he's taken under the wing of another wizard. However, Ged wants more than what this wizard can give him and so he goes to Roke which has a magical wizarding school. However, when he's there, one of the other boys challenges him sort of thing in a test of power and Ged does a very, very bad thing and manages to conjure up a shadow from the deepest depths of the earth and this shadow is intent on destroying him and taking over his body basically. So we follow Ged's journey trying to deal with that, trying to escape it and the consequences that follows. This book was very strange for me for some reason. It's classed as a middle grade novel but honestly I struggled to get through it. It read like an adult fantasy. <laughs> it was very slow and there seemed to be a lot of world building and then not enough focus on the characters. So like I said, Ged goes to this wizarding school and we spend a couple of pages talking about how he has to find a door and manage to go through it somehow. And then after he goes through the door, it's like, oh yeah, he did all these things in the school and now we're moving on. So you don't actually see him in the school, really. It's a lot of like time jumps that just didn't let you connect with the characters enough, I don't feel like. And then the second half of the book was mainly us on a boat. That's all it was. We had very detailed descriptions of these boats, different islands, but again, not enough attention was put to these characters, I don't think. Because I read the ending and I had to go back and reread it because I missed something. It wasn't clear what had happened and yeah, it was just very strange to me. So I had to go back then and reread a chunk of the book, which yeah, I didn't particularly expect. So that did hinder my experience reading it. I ultimately settled on a three star for this book. It was okay. I mean, the story was fine, but yeah, I didn't really enjoy it that much. However, I will be continuing on with the rest of the books for the Le Guin Along as they go along. Next up, I went off my TBR again and I read The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J Maas. After reading Crescent City, House of Earth and Blood, I was in such a Sarah J Maas mood and I decided to reread the entire Throne of Glass series starting with The Assassin's Blade. I've been wanting to reread this series for a while and I checked on Goodreads and I actually read this book four years ago, which is crazy to me. However, I obviously did read it and I loved it so much. I forgot how much I enjoyed this book. Sarah J Maas's writing is just so fast paced. Like I can fly through this book so quickly. I absolutely love it. Characters in this were just so good. Obviously it's a bundle of novellas, you don't get as much world building and character depth as you would like possibly, but having read the Throne of Glass series before up to Tower of Dawn, I haven't finished the series, I haven't read Tower of Dawn or Kingdom of Ash, so I'm gonna do that this time. But yeah, having read the rest of the series, I, I just appreciate this book so much and I'm glad Sarah J Maas decided to write this bind up of novellas. I think I rated this four stars. I probably gave it five stars the first time just because it was a very loved series on booktube and I kind of wanted to fit in. <laughs> so I was rating all these books really highly, just giving them five stars. But me and short stories don't get along too well, so it is a four star for me, even though I had such a good time reading it. Speaking of short stories, next up I read Ghosts of the Shadow Market by Cassandra Clare, Sarah Reese Brennan, Maureen Johnson, Kelly Link and Robin Wasserman. This book was for astronomy and that meant I had to read it when it was dark outside. So I actually read this gradually throughout the whole month, but I finished it in this section. <laughs> this bind up mainly focuses on brother Zachariah and his visits to the shadow market to find the lost Herondale. I don't really want to say much more because if you haven't read Cassandra Clare's other works this is going to spoil you so I don't want to do that because this whole series is a long journey and I would be so angry if someone spoiled something for me so I won't do that. But it is a collection of short stories and each story focuses on a different time period in the Shadowhunter world. I ended up giving this one a four stars I believe. Again same with the Assassin's Blade. I love the world, I love the characters but short stories of me don't tend to get on. I love 
a good long fantasy story with a load of world building and a load of character development and this is just a nice little extra that obviously doesn't focus so much on those elements. The last book I have to show you physically is Bring Me Their Hearts by Sarah Wolf. I read this to fulfill the prompt for Ancient Ruins and oh my goodness, I loved this one so much. <laughs> I've put this off for such a long time. I always sort of had my eye on it, but I never actually picked it up. And I'm so, so glad that I did because I gave this five stars. I absolutely loved this book. This follows our main character, Zira, who is a heartless, meaning that her heart has literally been taken out of her body by a witch and the witch can then control her. One day, Zira is called to a small meeting with some of the higher up witches and is informed that the country is on the brink of war and the only way that they can stop it is if Zira infiltrates the court and literally steals the prince's heart. So this follows her journey into trying to become a noblewoman and trying to win the affection of the prince. However, certain emotions start flaring up along the way and Zira's personal emotions come into play and I'm not gonna say much more. This was such a fun read, but then again, it was quite serious at the end. I've already picked up the second book. I don't have it physically, however, so I am listening to it on audio and I just absolutely love it. And I would highly recommend anyone to pick this up. Now, I did read two more books, which I don't have to show you, unfortunately, but the first one was Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. This one was a reread for me because I do have the sequel Children of Virtue and Vengeance on my shelf, but I read Children of Blood and Bone so long ago now that I actually forgot a lot of things and felt like I needed to reread it in order to go into the second book. So I did and oh my god, I forgot how much I loved that book. I gave it five stars if you can't tell. It is absolutely amazing. So we follow Thili, Amari, Zayn and Inan. They all come together because somehow Princess Amari gets hold of a sacred scroll that can be used to bring magic back to the kingdom. Thaili's people are magi and they've been oppressed by this king for years and now they have the chance to bring magic back. So it's all about their journey through this land to try and reclaim their magic and oh my goodness, I love it so much. I honestly would recommend this book to everyone. I loved it so much, even more the second time round. And I cannot wait to get into the second book. And then lastly, we finally made it. I read Over the Top, A Journey to Self-Love by Jonathan Van Ness. If that name sounds familiar, it is because it's written by Jonathan from the show Queer Eye. This book was for the Muggle Studies prompt. Oh my God, it was intense. Looking at Jonathan and the way he is on Queer Eye, I would never ever have thought that he had experienced all the things that he has. It's a really sad and dark story and history of his life but at the same time it's also very uplifting because there's a note throughout this whole book of that you just need to love yourself and if you love yourself you'll get to where you need to be with the right people and you will be okay. I struggled to get through a lot of sections because like I said the topics that Jonathan talks about are very dark. I have listed some trigger warnings in my last vlog I think it's the Owls week four and five vlog, if you wanna know any of them, but some of them are drug abuse, terminal illness, sex addiction, and HIV. So if any of those are sensitive topics to you or would trigger you, then I would recommend you staying away from that book for now. But yeah, it was a very harrowing read, but I think people do need to read it to realise that there's so much more to what you can see. A person is so much more than what you think they are. And it's crazy that Jonathan experienced the things that he did because, oh, any one of those things would have broken me. And it's quite inspiring to see him overcome all of that and get to where he is now. So I did feel like I ended the Owls on quite a high note with that because it does leave off on a positive message, like I said, with the self-love. It just put things into perspective for me. Again, you just don't realise how much someone could be struggling. And that's why I feel like you always need to be nice to people because everyone has their own battles that 
obviously they don't want to share for some reason or another so just to keep that in mind basically and I feel like this book did that so well. So that is it for this wrap up. I'm so sorry it took so long. I should have done like a mid-month wrap up or something. I will do if I read this much in May but if you're still here thank you so so much for watching. If you liked this video please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you would like to see more content from me. But that's it for me today guys and I'll see you in my next one. Bye! -bye.